Hey there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Well, I certainly am, because today I'm playing my signature guitar. Well, this is actually the first prototype that Charvel sent me, uh, and we've been working on my signature, Charvel signature guitar for some time now, and uh, it's finally available. Well, it's available for pre-order, uh, but will be uh, on sale in a dealer near you from September. So I'm doing extremely well, feeling very, very happy at the moment. So uh, yeah, but this is the initial prototype that they sent and it's, it's an absolute corker. So today's lesson, I'm gonna be using this. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check out my signature guitar, all the specs, all the details, um, check in the description box below. Okay, let's get straight to today's lesson. What are we gonna look at? I'm just gonna do a quick lesson today. I'm gonna to show you uh, some major seventh arpeggio shapes that I use and um, the, the kind of the way that I think about them and how I use them in order to, to navigate my way through the fretboard or across the fretboard. Okay, so getting straight to it, we're gonna stay in the key of A here. Keep things nice and simple. So I'm just going to show you the three basic shapes that I use and then we'll talk about various other things after then. Okay, so here's the first shape that we're going to play. So... Okay. Okay, that's the first shape. It's a little bit different from the usual... Okay. Both have their advantages, but I'm just going to start here, starting on the root note, rather than moving down to the, uh, the seventh degree here. So, let me just go over the fingering. One, four, two, one, then we're going to change to three, okay, to set us up for the next bit. Two, one, four, one. Okay, and then we can uh, play that there. Okay, that's our first shape, okay? Then we're gonna move up to this note here, which is the uh, first inversion, basically. And we're gonna play this shape. Okay, so nice and slowly, I'll tell you what the fingerings are. One, three, two, three, two, one. And then we get this note here placed on the G string. Four, two, one, four. Okay, nice and steady. Oops. Okay, that's the second shape. And then moving on, we get the third shape here. So we get the fifth degree of the arpeggio. And we play this shape. Notice how we're covering all six strings here. Very, very important to do. Nothing wrong with doing uh, groupings of, say, three and four strings at all, or two strings even. But uh, I think it's important to just be aware of what the, the shapes involve and, and what the notes are uh, in terms of the arpeggio, what the intervals are. So let me play each one again. So first one. Second. Third. things I want to talk about here. Um, we can start connecting other forms of the shape, so you don't have to stick to those three. Uh, in fact, I urge you to, to mix up shapes to, um, so that you don't have any areas, areas of the fretboard that you feel a little bit of sort of trepidation towards because you haven't practiced them. So you need to be really, really comfortable in every single position that you find yourself in and any finger that you find yourself using. You need to negotiate your way through it comfortably, just by your knowledge of the arpeggios. Okay, so if we take this standard shape here. Because we're using our second finger, it kind of precludes the possibility of, of us placing this note here. And when we do that, that opens up a whole new shape. So a lot of it is to do with these replacing the same pitch 
but on a different string. In this case, on a lower string, so same pitch. So if we start with the second finger here, that's the shape that feels the most comfortable, okay? Uh, however, we could use the index finger and slide up to move us into that first position that we played initially. So, slide, and then we're into this. That works beautifully. Okay, see what I mean? So you shouldn't um, just stick with three specific shapes. Mix these shapes together and see how they work well to get see how they work together and if they work well together okay so that's that's just a first idea here let's move on to the third this this works beautifully here i love this on the top three strings now that lends itself to to additional notes being added These shapes are really, really useful. Uh, and you can make them sound really, really melodic rather than just an arpeggio uh, practice tool. You know, make them musical, make them melodic. So, just going over the second shape again. And again, we're taking this note here, instead of playing it on the B string, we just replace it and play it on the G string, same pitch. We get that lovely fluid flowing. I love the sound of that, it just flows really great. And like I said before, additional notes. You know, that's when it starts to get really, really interesting. So uh, you could combine uh, these two shapes together. So the first three notes of the initial shape and then slide up. Uh, we're jumping ahead going into the next arpeggio, but that's all three together. So um, that's, those are some of the applications here. A lot of the time it is, as I said to before, uh, as, as I was alluding to before, the fingering that you use usually dictates which shape that you play. So this particular shape, our third shape, here, if I start with the index finger, it really follows that I've got to place the third degree on the same string. Otherwise, we're going to have to shift. That might lend itself to some even more melodic style playing, but that's not what I'm, I want to get at here. It's the fingering usually dictating the shapes that we play. So if we start with the index finger, it follows. That's a natural movement. That's a natural pattern, okay? If we start with the second finger, of course, we have to change the shape just to make it comfortable. Unless you feel really comfortable doing that, which for me is just, you know, if, unless I'm working on weaker combinations of fingers, then I wouldn't really do that. It's not practical. So, what if I use finger three? We're into a different shape here. See how all of these connect based upon the fingering that we're using for each arpeggio shape. Okay, so, and if we started with four, we're in the same, same position here, although that finger four jumping up a fret is a bit awkward. So we may, may want to take this note and place it on the B string, so. And of course we get a different sound when we articulate our way through the arpeggio uh, in a different way. So, uh, so lots of things to think about. I didn't want to digress too much about these, but what I suggest you do is just get your fingers around these shapes and make them just totally comfortable to play and then start experimenting with these as much as you can. Okay, before we finish, make sure you check out my website. Lots of downloads there, uh, lots of lesson content. And it's a brilliant way to support what I do. So 
If you want to um, support me and so that I can continue doing videos like that, like this, <laughs> then, then head over to my website and buy some stuff from there, okay? So uh, anyway, I think I should leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, and I'm going to continue to play this absolute beaut of a guitar. Uh, like I said before, uh, I'll leave the link in the description box below so you can check out my new Charvel RG signature. And uh, yeah, there we have it. Right, I will leave you guys to it. Enjoy the rest of your day and weekend and everything. And I will catch up with you real soon. Cheers, guys.